This is Jack Porter with Yellow Dog Fly Fishing and today we're going to be going through the packing and equipment list for a trip to Patagonia. Alright, so we're going to dive into flies for a trip to Patagonia. Uh, you know, a lot of people are headed down there to fish dry flies. That's what's so exciting about fishing in Patagonia. So we'll start with the big stuff, the fun stuff. Uh, this is the one of the go-to patterns at most locations in Patagonia. And of course, there's going to be variety and different preferences in different fisheries. But the Fat Albert in various colors is regarded as kind of one of the go-to must-have flies in Patagonia. And this, these are obviously big. Uh, these can be fished very effectively on lakes. Uh, you know, slap it down really hard. It can be a dragonfly, a big beetle, the Cantabra beetle. Uh, it just looks like something alive that these fish are going to come up and eat off the top. Also floats a dropper really well, so you can fish dry dropper. Um, and these come in much smaller sizes as well. So really any size Fat Albert is worth having in Patagonia. And same with the colors. Can't go wrong. So that's a, a must have there. Similarly, we've got, you know, some big kind of chubby Chernobyl type stuff. We've got the water walker, big foam rubber legs. This is, you know, you want to have a lot of this stuff in your box. And there is no such thing as too big <laughs> in Patagonia, which is pretty fun. Um, you know, again, they get smaller than this. I've got some examples here of some smaller ones. So I do think it's important to have you know, some really big stuff, some big attractor stuff, and then also a little bit smaller, a little more realistic. Um, here, I'll just pull these out. Here's some of those smaller ones. Um, little, again, a little more approachable for the fish uh, when it's a little more technical of a situation, but having anything with foam and rubber legs, you're gonna wanna have a good range of size. Uh, and then of course, grasshoppers, this is a main uh, a main food source for the fish down there, especially in the summer months, really from, it depends on where you are, but from mid-December through the month of March, you can reliably fish these foam flies and specifically hoppers. Uh, again, a range of sizes is going to be good. These big ones are nice, easy to see, fun to fish, um, and then variety of colors, you know, yellow, pink, tan, uh, all of them will work. I've got a, a box here with, you know, a pretty serious range of sizes, colors, profiles, uh, floating abilities. Some of these fish well with a dropper, others fish well just as a dry on their own. So I like to have a variety uh, for the hopper patterns. Um, then we'll get into kind of some of the smaller stuff. It's not all big attractor fishing. Oftentimes you can run into a hatch or you can you know, run into a fish that's refusing a grasshopper or an attractor, a small chubby. And in that situation, you're going to want to size down for the most part. Usually the black beetle is kind of the hatch buster in Patagonia. So something like this with a wing, without a wing, uh, even smaller you could go. So I've got some examples here. You know, you can see ants, beetles, little terrestrials with a low profile that hit the water very softly. Uh, you know, in spring creeks especially, these can be very effective and you must have some beetles for some of those more picky fish. Then if they're keyed in on a hatch, uh, you know, you're going to want to have some caddis patterns and some mayfly patterns. Fortunately, you don't usually have to be terribly technical with the specific pattern. So out west here, oftentimes on the spring creeks out here, we've got to have the exact fly, the perfect drift the super light tippet. In Patagonia, you know, if it's a mayfly coming down, probably a parachute atoms or a purple haze is gonna get it done. Yeah, so you've got, uh, you know, for mayflies, these parachute atoms or anything with a parachute in any color, that's gonna be, you know, a good option. And then for the caddis, something in this size, black. We've got this one with a little flash and a wing. Um, you know, again, not terribly important to have the exact fly. You're just looking for right size, right kind of bug. So then I mentioned the lake fishing in Patagonia already, but uh, pretty much any lodge you go to, you're going to spend some time on the lakes. They can be incredibly fun, not only with dry flies, but with streamers, woolly buggers as well. So it's important to have some kind of leachy stuff. You know, the olive woolly bugger, the black woolly bugger, these are two tried and true classics. I also like some 
some of these like a more of a leech pattern, both weighted and unweighted. Oftentimes you'll run into a situation where you see a cruising fish and sometimes you don't want that weighted fly to come down heavily. You want to be a little bit more delicate with something unweighted, lead the fish, you know, he comes into it and, and eats it. So, you know, something in this, again, size, color, variety is good, but black and olive are tough to beat. And then uh, lastly, we'll go with the subsurface nymph patterns. You know, like I said, a lot of folks are there to fish dry flies. The guides want to fish dry flies. Of course, conditions change, uh, and sometimes it makes sense to go subsurface or throw on a dropper just to be more efficient and cover the water. So in that case, again, no need for technical patterns. We're going to go to, you know, classics like the Prince Nymph, variations of the Prince Nymph, Pheasant Tail is, a, is another good one. But you can see I've got a variety of sizes here. And this is a big one that like there really isn't such thing as too big on the nymphs again. Um, you want to get their attention. Oftentimes you're fishing very clear water. So having some different sizes, different colors, different patterns, that's going to be, you know, important to have. I usually don't use a fly box for my nymphs. Uh, I just go with a puck like this, throw them all in there. And uh, I'll just, I'll just pick through them. I find that, you know, a box for nymphs takes up so much space and in here I, I really only fish, you know, a select variety. So having, you know, some pheasant tails, some prince nymphs all in here, I can quickly pick through this, uh, close it up and I can throw it in my pocket if I need to, throw it in my waders. Uh, you know, a lot of people do use fly boxes, so it's just a preference. And then uh, continuing on, the rubber legs, another classic for trout fishing pretty much everywhere in the world. Variety of colors, weights, sizes, you know, these are coffee, two different tones. You can do black, brown, uh, but I do like to have some of these as well. And lastly, the worm. No one, uh, no, no one's first choice favorite fly is the worm, but it's good to have. If you need it, you've got it. Uh, the guides will go to them when you, the water comes up or if fishing's tough, um, if the fish just are not coming up, the worm is nice to have in the box. Just some basic colors, you know, red, pink, maybe a brown, maroon, couple options. I generally go with weighted with a bead head, but uh, not super important there. But good to have these. I'll also uh, mention the streamers. You know, depending on the lodge you're going to, you may or may not be fishing a lot of streamers. For example, in Chile, there's a lot of bigger rivers, bigger water with less hatch oriented uh, food sources. And in those situations, you're usually throwing big flies or big streamers. So again, as we've said through all this, color and uh, size variety is important. So you can see here, I've got a lot of flash, yellow, you know, some more gold, um, and orange brownish colors and then on the back side a little bit more variety got a lot of white here orange olive is always a go-to black and then some kind of cream and gray options so depending on the specific fishery you're going to there's definitely going to be preferences and that's where we're happy to help advise on specific patterns colors uh, you know to make sure you have the right stuff for your fishery but in general you know if you have a streamer collection bring it bring that variety, bring that different, you know, the different patterns and the different sizes.